On episode one of Teton AT TV, we visit with high altitude videographer, snowboard mountaineer, and Jackson Hole native, John Greiber. John is just back from a trip to the Himalayas, documenting the oldest American ever to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Welcome back to Jackson, man. I'm sure it's good to be back. Thanks for sitting down with me, Teton AT TV. Um, I came actually back early to sit down with you. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. Knew, yeah, I knew this was going on, so thanks I really... For Thanks for changing your itinerary. <laughs> yeah, we had this meeting planned so far in advance, so appreciate it. You know, just get, get right to the basics. What's it like standing on top of the highest mountain in the world? You know, you've seen all the pictures, you've seen all the film, but standing on top of the world, there's nothing like it. Um, you, honestly, you can't even put words to it. I shot film, that won't even tell the tale. I mean, it's just, it's 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 so much spiritual, It's it's emotional, it's... It's just un unreal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really amazing. And the view from the summit is is spectacular, but the one that really struck me is the view from the south summit. Mm -hmm. Because you're walking up and you're in the sun, only at four o'clock in the morning, you get to the south summit and you look across to the main central summit over the Hillary Step and the summit ridge. Yeah. And, you know, I just started crying. That's because awesome. it was just something that you've only seen in pictures and it's just something, you know, a lot was of people it, don't get to see. Was your emotion from the effort that you had put to get there, or was it more of just a personal kind of dream come true for you? I don't or? know. I don't know. It's it's a really good question because everybody was emotional, mm -hmm. and I think it's I think it's your time. I think you're emotional when you when you first see that, and there's different there's different emotions that kind of course through. And I think a big thing is that you're so long on the mountain, and you just don't know if you're going to get it. You don't know if you're going to get sick at one point with Cipro and, and cause you not to, you know, be able to climb at all. You don't know, you just don't know what's going to happen. The weather might close you out. We had a huge summit window. <clears throat> and so we were really able to kind of pick and choose the days that we wanted to go. And there were some bigger groups that were ahead of us. And we just hung back and just let them go so we can have a clear shot at the mountain. Because yeah. we didn't want to get hung up on the Hillary step. Or, and, and to be honest with you, I didn't want, I didn't want 40 people on the summit. <laughs> you know, I wanted to have I wanted to have my experience kind of minimal, yeah, yeah. and there were not a, not all of our 20 group summit at the same time. You know, it trickled through, I'd say about two hours. Right. Yeah. And um, I summited at 7:30, and I was able to stay up on top for about an hour. Cool. And uh, filmed a bunch, and just hung out, and just took it in. I mean, I was on top of the planet. You know, not only were you climbing <clears throat> the mountain, but a you were working, and b I mean, you were carrying all this camera gear and having to stop and take uh shoot video and then maybe catch up to the group yep. you know how i mean does that make it just that much harder or so that was a one-man show with the film the sound the lighting the everything i had to definitely work twice as hard i felt yeah and um i acclimatized really well and luckily let's be honest warner 69 he's not going to move super fast <laughs> <laughs> so i was able to to shoot him if i had a tripod put everything back in the pack and then go up ahead. So my whole kit would weigh about 18 pounds with the tripod, the camera, the battery, the tapes, and everything else. There wasn't a little Sherpa you had, kind of short line until you carried yeah. all the extra batteries and stuff. Y you next time. <laughs> cool. Well, no, yeah. but, but but basically it was it was a hard project, but, but my goal was to um, you know know that I wasn't able to get all the shots. And yeah. I didn't have an assistant. And and I just, I just picked each shot and I kind of you know, took my time to get those shots. Mm -hmm. And I usually shot with two cameras. I shot with uh, a, a bigger camera, which was about four and a half, five pounds, and and that's it's it's all shot in high def. And then I shot with a small camera, with um, like crossing the ice fall or crossing the ladders, yeah. and um, POV and head and helmet cam and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. The funny thing is, is once I once I once I walked off the summit, I kept looking over my shoulder, and I wasn't going back, and I. Descended the Hillary step, walked down from the south summit, got down to base the the south call, and I thought, well, shit, I hope the camera was turned on because <laughs> the batteries, you know, I couldn't look at the film, and so, you know, because sometimes you can't push the button uh. twice, and so I kept thinking, well, did I see the red record button on? <laughs> and I was like, wow, if I didn't, I'm really screwed. How do you deal with kind of being away from the family for so long, mm -hmm. sitting around, just sort of trying not to get sunburned at base camp? You know, what I mean. <clears throat> talk it's, about that a little bit. <clears throat> Everest is really hard because it's so high, 
and it's so much time and there's so much time commitment and you know you're not on the mountain every day so over those over those 50 days that we spent you know around base camp we were you know we'd go up the mountain and come down and rest for two or three days and then we'd go all the way down to let's say the the lower all the way down the lower villages nearly down to 12,000 feet and rested there and so that was a little break but for the most part there's a lot of downtime because I mean, as Westerners, you have to spend so much time to acclimatize. Sherpas can make it up there in two weeks, no problem. And for, for us to acclimatize, it just takes so long. And to sit on that rock pile of ice and rock of the Kumbu is, is really brutal. And, to, you know, and that's where the email comes into play. You know, you've you, you read all your books. You've, you've talked all the talk you can with your, with your people. Yeah. And you're just tired of it. I mean... I mean, to spend two months with anybody would drive you crazy. Yeah. This is the, the summit suit that went to the top of the world. And nice. this is my little, the picture of Becca and Nevin on my arm. I don't really know what this is even for, but it's a good thing for a picture. <laughs> Gotta have it, man. <laughs> nice work. All the pictures I've seen, all the tents there have antennas sticking out of the, the tents, you know, in contact with the outside world and stuff. I mean, does anyone kind of do fly-by-night trips or? Not on Everest. Ever, people don't really do fly-by-night trips on Everest, as far as I can tell. I mean, <clears throat> even even the smallest trips are going to have to satisfy their sponsors, mm. and and they do that by sending dispatches, and it might be images, it might be text, it might be short little video clips. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so are you saying that? Uh, so um, every everybody the mountain um, almost forces people to do it because it costs so much, so they need to raise money, and in a sense. Climbing the mountain supports climbing the mountain like this. Hmm. It's a good way to look at it. I think Everest has a real mystique to it still, and you would think that it would just be done. But played there's, out, right? I mean, you would think it's played out, but it just keeps going. Now, John, I know a lot of your passion for the mountains kind of started with snowboarding here in Jackson and the Teton, snowboard mountaineering, and being a skier myself, a backcountry skier that is. And you know, hiking all the way to the top of the mountain, it, it just would have drove me nuts to be standing up there, not having my skis and stuff. I mean, did you just wish you had your board when you're at the top of that mountain? Or? Um, this trip, yeah, it would have been total fluff kitten, knee not knee deep, but you know, binding deep chalk. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. But it, yeah, <laughs> but it's reliable, and you know what you're turning on. It would right. have been. It would have been a perfect yeah. year for skiing Everest. I talked to Dave Hahn a lot this year, and he told me that this spring's condition was um, unlike most springs, and it was better condition than when, when the Deloriers and, and Jimmy Chin skied it last fall, and which is very uncommon. This year was perfect conditions on the Lotse face, all the way up to the balcony, beyond that, and to the south summit was ideal conditions. Do you see yourself kind of uh, pursuing any more snowboard mountaineering uh, goals and trips or Yeah, absolutely. Like I'd love to, I want to continue snowboard mountaineering, but mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, with a family, um, I'm glad I made it this far with the shit that I pulled off, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm psyched to be sitting here talking mm -hmm. to you because I've had lots of close calls like all of our friends have, and I've just lived through them. So my snowboard mountaineering will probably really taper. I mean, the last big burly thing I did, the last two things, was with, was with Coombs and Doug Workman on the Otter Body. I filmed that, and then um, and then Cho Yu went to, went from snowboard from 8,000 meters. You know, I keep saying I'm going to taper, but I keep I keep going and going. But I mean, to be honest with you, all those times sitting at base camp, I just dreamt of playing in the playing in the river with Nevin, my little boy. And, and sitting in the drift boat. So, you know, there's a lot more to uh, push the limits. I'll let that go to some other people and, and have well, fun. Well, John, we're, we're glad to be sitting here talking to you, too. Thanks for talking to me for a little while, Thanks, man. man. Appreciate it. Was a pleasure. At Teton AT, we love to ski. At Teton AT, the mountains and me. At Teton AT, we ski to be free. We love to ski at Teton AT.